What's up, everybody? I'm Jason, and welcome back. So I didn't even have my RFC for a month before I, well, even a week, actually, before I already had a laundry list of features I wanted to see ported from the R5 to the R5C and vice versa. So in this video, I'm going to look at 10 of the features that are in the R5 that I'd like to see Canon bring to the R5C. Now, before I get into the list, I did set a couple of constraints on myself when I started looking at this. So first, I'm not going down the rabbit hole of simply wishing for new features that didn't already exist in some form on one of the two cameras. Second, I'm not looking at hardware changes. Everything here is software, and since it's all software that Canon wrote, I think there's probably a higher possibility that it could actually get implemented if there is enough feedback to Canon for it. And one final note, while I'm saying R5C here, I'm really using that as shorthand for the R5C's video mode and by extension Canon's Cinema EOS OS in general. Similarly, when I say R5, what I'm really talking about is Canon's photo o OS, including the photo mode that is on the R5C. So with that said, let's get to the list. At number 10 on my list is the ability to configure a button to toggle between the screen and viewfinder. So like the R5, the R5C has the same options for switching between the screen and viewfinder, auto 1, auto 2, screen only, and viewfinder only. However, unlike the R5, you can't configure a button to toggle between the viewfinder and the screen. Well, not easily at least, you can have it go to a menu page. Now, without a button to make quick switches possible, the screen and viewfinder only modes are tedious to use at best. Moving on to number nine, an active area indicator for setting custom white balances. So with firmware 1.5 on the R5, Canon added the ability to set a custom white balance using the quick control menu. Now, part of the user interface for this is a box in the center of the frame that indicates where your white balance reference needs to be for it to properly register. Now, the R5C has the same capability of setting custom white balances. In fact, in many ways, it's easier to use as you only have to press a button to activate it. You don't even have to go into a menu, but it lacks the user interface that has that box to indicate where you need to place the right white reference card in the frame for it to register properly. Now, obviously, this isn't a huge deal, but I'd like to see the box on the R5C. Number eight. Enable the internal Wi-Fi and Bluetooth modules. Well, at least for remote control and GPS tagging. Now, the R5C has the same Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chips that are in the EOS R5, and they're both available for you to use in photo mode. However, in video mode, you can't use them, and instead you need to use a separate WFT grip. Now, it's true that the Wi-Fi on the R5 or in the R5 is not exactly the fastest, and it probably can't support the full-on 4K video streaming capabilities that the R5C has. However, it is fast enough for controlling the camera. And for that matter, while Bluetooth doesn't offer a lot of bandwidth either, it does have enough for GPS tagging and simply starting and stopping this uh, video recording as well. However, instead of being able to use GPS or use your smartphone to tag videos with the GPS and the Wi-Fi to make simple control things, you need, as I said, that WFT grip and to spring for a GPE2 GPS unit as well, at least if you want the GPS type of capabilities. Now, in both of these cases, I think it's entirely reasonable to want to use the radios that are already in the camera instead of having to spring for external add-ons. Number seven the ability to pause continuous AF without completely locking the AF system. Now, I do have to admit, the R5C's behavior here makes an awful lot of sense. So on the R5, there's a pause movie servo AF function. And on the R5C, that's basically replaced with an AF lock that locks the AF system as a whole. So it makes sense that when the AF system is locked, the camera shouldn't respond to any AF commands at all, including from hitting, say, the AF on button. However, I'm used to the R5's movie servo pause, which lets you still refocus using the AF on button, even though the camera isn't doing the active continuous movie servo focusing. Now, of course, this is partially a training issue and should go away with some more time spent with the camera. In fact, it already largely has for me. That said, an even better solution to this might be to combine this idea with my number three feature request and create a focus override super button that does both of these things. 
Number six on the list, the ability to control exposure compensation with a dial. Okay, I get it. The R5C is a serious cinematography camera and nobody in a, a serious cinematography application uses anything but manual exposure settings. Except the camera supports auto exposure using either the ISO or the iris. And of course, anytime you have auto exposure modes going on, you need a way to control the exposure compensation, which the also R5C also provides as well. And you can do it either by digging through the menus or you can map two separate buttons to control uh, exposure compensation up and down. Now, at the same time, the R5C has more dials than any other Cinema EOS camera except the C70. There are three on the body and one on the lens, assuming at least that it's an RF lens. That's more than enough to have a dial for exposure compensation along with all of the other things that you'd want to have on a dial. Yet the camera only allows you to configure the dials to control the iris, ISO, white balance mode, white balance Kelvin, Kelvin white balance color compensation, or turn the dial off. Why white balance mode is even an option, but exposure compensation isn't, is completely beyond me. At number five, custom shooting modes. So if you're an EOS still photographer, then you probably already know what these are. And if you don't, I have an entire video on them that I'll put a link to in the description below. But the short of it is that the custom shooting modes allow you to save almost every major camera setting from the exposure settings to custom functions and recall them at the press of a button or the turn of a dial as it were. Now, custom shooting modes can be incredibly useful if you have a fixed setup or setups, but want to be able to use the camera for other things as well. So, for example, on the DSLRs that I used to shoot these videos until I got my R5C, I had a studio custom shooting mode, and that had all of my exposure settings, white balance, AF, everything saved for this specific setup. I could take the camera out, film something somewhere else, make whatever changes I needed to do. Then when I got back in the studio, I could instantly reconfigure it to shoot one of these videos simply by flipping it into the C3 custom user mode. Now, while the R5C does have an option to save menu settings to the SD card, this is limited in ways that prevent it from really being useful in this application. Namely, you can only save one configuration per card, so if you need multiple configurations, you need to have a bunch of SD cards. And then the saved menu settings don't include things like the exposure and white balance settings that you were actually shooting with. So maybe this isn't the most cinema level thing, but I think it would be handy for a lot more people than just me. Number four, recentering the AF point with the multi-controller. So on the R5, you can configure the camera to always use the multi-controller to move the AF point. Now, interestingly, the R5C does this already by default. However, on the R5, when set up for this multi-controller direct operation, you can recenter the AF point at any time by simply pressing straight in on the multi-controller. Now, this is not the case on the R5C. And much to my surprise, the only way you can recenter the R5C's AF point is to actually push the cancel button on the bottom of the camera. Now, while this is a small difference, it is one that I find I constantly run into switching between the two cameras and I dearly miss on my R5C when I'm using it. Number three on my list is an option to allow the R5C to focus at the lens's full speed when directed to do so. Now, one of the underlying premises of the Cinema EOS OS, and therefore the R5C, is that it doesn't assume that the camera isn't being recorded just because it's not recording to its own internal memory. You could be using an external recorder, or you could be using this uh, as a live production camera and feeding video back to a video village or broadcast truck. As a result, focusing moves are always made at movie servo speeds. Now, of course, this is great if you are actually recording externally and you don't want snappy or jumpy focus shifts. But if you're trying to set up for a shot, sometimes I find it is desirable to have the camera focus where you want right now. And in fact, sometimes even when shooting, it's desirable to have the camera focus as fast as possible, say, if you have to pick up a new subject. Now the R5 will do this, well, at least to an extent. If you activate the AF system while the camera isn't recording, and the a then the AF system jumps to focus with the same gusto that it has in photo mode. Do the same thing while the camera is recording and it uses the more sedate movie servo speeds.
Now on the R5C, when you manually activate the AF system, the camera does focus with the fastest settings available for continuous focusing, but that's still much slower than the maximum drive rate for the lens or that the lens and camera can sustain. Moreover, there's no way to tell the camera to go any faster. There's basically no get it done now kind of override. In fact, this is one of the reasons that I ended up getting a follow focus for my rig. In cases where I have to deal with large focus shifts, it's faster for me to roughly focus the camera manually, then let the AF system fine tune the focus, than it is to let the AF system do the whole thing straight off. Moving along to number two, better control over audio recording. Yeah, I know, this one really shocked me too. So the R5C definitely beefs up the R5's audio recording capabilities. PCM audio is now recorded in 24 bits instead of 16, and there's four channels of it instead of two. However, while the recording capabilities have been improved, some functions are also just plain out missing. So to start with, there's no way to disable or control the gain of the internal microphones. Don't need an audio track from them? Too bad, you're probably going to get it anyway. Moreover, unless you're using both a multifunction shoe input and a 3.5mm microphone input on the side of the camera, at least two of the four recorded audio channels will always be from the internal microphones. Don't need or want that because you're using a different microphone? Again, too bad. Further, if you don't need the extra two audio channels, there's no way to record only two channels in PCM mode either. So if you're just recording scratch audio with just the camera's two internal mics, you get two copies of the same audio. The camera doesn't even offset the gain of one of those copies to protect against clipping. Now, granted, compared to most of the video formats the R5C shoots, the 3 megabits per second that PC audio, or PCM audio uses really isn't that much. However, wasted space is still wasted space. And in the case two copies of the same signal, it's really just pointlessly wasted space at that. Now, of course, my real beef with all of this is that all of that extra audio is something that I have to deal with in post. When I shoot B-roll footage in the normal recording mode, and that's B-roll footage at least that I don't want audio with, I can't turn the audio off in camera. As a result, I have to constantly deal with that audio manually in post-processing and remove it as I'm editing or adding those clips. Now, speaking of shooting B-roll in normal recording mode, that brings me to the number one feature on my list. There's no subject tracking autofocus when the camera is in slow and fast motion recording mode. Now, slow and fast motion recording on the R5C is considerably more powerful than the R5's high frame rate mode. You have control over both the input and replay frame rates, with input options ranging from one frame per second all the way to 120 frames per second. However, while there's a myriad of frame rates to choose from, and that is nice to have, if your shot requir requires holding focus on something that moves around in the frame, you're going to have problems as there's no tracking autofocus available in slow and fast, mo fast motion mode. Continuous autofocus is possible, at least for most of those frame rates, but only using the normal autofocus point, not using tracking AF. Interestingly, this isn't a limitation for the EOS R5. Subject tracking works fine when shooting in high frame rate mode. And why this capability is missing on the R5C is really beyond me. Though, admittedly, it is also missing from all the other EOS cinema cameras as well. So in any event, that's 10 things I'd like to see brought to the R5C from the R5. If I missed something that you think would be really helpful, let me know in the comments. Also, if you know how to do something I described as missing, let me know. The R5C is complex, and I'm still trying to figure out all the ins and outs of it and the Cinema EOS OS. As always, if you found this interesting, let me know by hitting that like button. If you, this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you're not already. Finally, if you know someone who might find this useful or interesting, share it with them. It helps them. It helps me. It's free. It's a win all the way around. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.